All right, welcome back to another episode of the Michael Volpe Investigates podcast that I call the Impromptu. I'm here with Nancy Layton, and Nancy, you you're a grandmother. Well, you're a mother and grandmother, but you've got a uh, like a uh, a social services and court case out of West Virginia. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and there's a couple of people in your case that uh, that my readers and and listeners will know about. You were in front of Judge Stephen Schaefer and a woman named Kristen Antolini was the, I think, guardian at litem. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Okay. Now uh, let's start, not at the beginning, but your da- it's your daughter who lost custody to social services. What, what happened there? I think what happened is the other grandparent filed for guardianship And when she did that, uh, you know, because she accused my daughter of the drug issues, but when she did that, CPS got involved Mm -hmm. and it went from there. But do you think your daughter does have a drug problem? (sighs) I know she has in the past. Mm -hmm. Now I don't. I could not, I cannot tell you. The only thing I can state, you know, is my truth. Mm-hmm. You know, that's it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you have questions about whether your granddaughter should have been removed from your daughter's care in the first place, right? Yes, I do. Yes, mm-hmm. I do. Because the dad, who's the grand, other grandparents, you know, mother, obviously, mm-hmm. she was left in the same situation she was supposed to be protected from. Mm-hmm. Okay, but let, let's focus more on your involvement in it. So I think, uh, it, I think it was the spring of 2022. That's when this part of the story gets started. You were, uh, yeah, explain it. it. It gets a little bit complicated, but Judge Stephen Schaefer gave you uh, everyone an order, and that's supposed to be followed, a judge's order. And then it seemed like no one was following it but you. So explain what happened there. And uh, so get into the story from there. Okay, this was um, 2021, Mm -hmm. the spring of 2021 when it started. Mm -hmm. Okay, after five months, I finally got a hearing for intervention. It took five months to get it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the judge did grant me visitation Mm -hmm. in my home every other weekend Mm -hmm. and in this order you know he said i was not to let either parents with an s Mm -hmm. see this child unsupervised that meant text messages no phone calls no nothing Mm -hmm. and um the first weekend that I picked my granddaughter up and then I took her back on Sunday, the other grandmother had sent me a message to drop my granddaughter off with her dad. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I can't do that. The judge told me not to. Mm -hmm. Well, he's allowed to be there. The guardian ad litem gave him permission to move back in the week before my hearing. Okay, and the guardian ad litem, that's that you're referring to Antolini, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it, in case somebody is not following, Judge Stephen Schaefer gave an order, and that's not a suggestion. Judicial order is like what it sounds, that you can see the your granddaughter, but that no one is to allow the parents to see the child unsupervised and yet Right after, like during your first, your first visit with your granddaughter, the other grandparent is saying, "No big deal. Our son can see him," and that's according to the guardian ad litem. So the guardian ad litem appears to have gone against the judicial, the judge's order, and uh, and the other grandparent was um, using that to to effectively violate ju- the judge's order. I have that right. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay, so then what happened? So this was the first weekend that I had visitation on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. I called the CPS worker, Peggy Pace. 
Mm-hmm. And I said, what am I supposed to do? Mm-hmm. And I think I, I sent you that recording. Mm-hmm. And the CPS worker told me, oh, you know, the dad's allowed to get her. You can leave her with oh. the dad. All right. You know, so the so, CPS worker told me the same thing. So, and, and this happens oftentimes. So basically what's happening is you got mixed signals between what the judge is saying and what CPS and the guardian of Lightham are saying. So all of a sudden, you don't know who you're supposed to go to, to to know what you're supposed to do, it sounds like. Absolutely. And, you know, I I got reprimanded because mm-hmm. I was causing problems by not leaving her. Be- and you were doing that. that because you heard the judge say not to. I know. Right. I know. Right. All right. Now, then uh, from there, I think uh, they, they started to try to stop your visits so what happened with that okay when the judge granted me visitation every other weekend that my first weekend would have been i think october 10th somewhere in there Mm -hmm. so it went on october november to like the second week of december and then at a christmas party the other grandparent attended, mm-hmm. you know, I'm assuming they all got together and had a little chat. Well, I, now Nancy's not following the rules and, you know, I'm asking for more visitation from the grandparent, you know, just basically I was just not following any kind of rules. You know, when I had the text messages, you know, I was more than cooperative. She mm-hmm. was offering me you know, more visitation and they just turn it around and make it look like I did something. Right. So, uh, CPS and the guardian Mm -hmm. stopped my visitation. All right. Now I want to CPS and the guardian, they, they told you that you couldn't see, you couldn't have visits anymore. Right. Now, was and, there a and, was there a judicial order? Did Judge Schaefer write an order stating that, or this was coming strictly from Anthelini and and CPS? That was coming strictly from Anthelini and CPS. Oh, and did they give you something in writing, or they just told you that we're cutting it off? No, it was by email. But in, in a, but in, a, in an informal email, but not a a document that, that was presented to you? No. Okay. No, absolutely not. All right. And then in the visits themselves, would you say they went well or poorly? What was your granddaughter acting out? Was she saying she didn't want to see you anymore? Anything like that happened? No, it was, it was absolutely, it was wonderful. It was just, it was wonderful, you know, after not having seen her for so many, many months, Mm -hmm. it was just, we picked up right where we left off. Like nothing had changed. I think what happened is my granddaughter had said something like, well, you know, why can't I see nanny like I used to, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that that's what happened. Okay. Now picking up the story. So after, after CPS sends you this email, did you try to go to judge Schaefer to have this squared away? How, what would happen? Okay. No, because, you know, being, I was not at all familiar with the court system. I didn't even know I could have a hearing, mm-hmm. you know, a second time. Anyway, mm-hmm. this went on until March the 9th of mm-hmm. 2022, mm-hmm. my daughter had had a hearing. Mm-hmm. And apparently, you know, they just discussed my visitation in that hearing. So I got another email from Kristen Antolini mm-hmm. that the court had now suspended my visitation. Okay. You know, no reason, no nothing, no court. I mean, that's all it was was an email. Mm-hmm. Okay. And oh. you know, it did not say no contact. It said no visitation. Mm-hmm. But yet, I could have no phone calls, no nothing. Mm-hmm. All right. So, what happened after that email? So after that email, 
somehow along the way after talking to people and this and that, um, I did file a motion for another hearing, which happened in July of 2022. And before, uh, before you go on, did you have a lawyer or you had to do everything yourself? I had an attorney way back at that first hearing and for that hearing only. All right. So a as things were unfolding, you had to figure out all of these things yourself. Absolutely. All right. Everything. And so, so it's also fair to say that, that the, your inexperience with that part of the law probably hurt you as well. Because if you knew all of the angles, you probably could have filed the exact right thing right away. But uh, right. and is it fair to say you didn't have an attorney because you couldn't afford an attorney? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, so do finances were part of the reason that was, that was keeping you away from your granddaughter, um, which is an important point. Uh, it shouldn't cost this much money to be able to do this. And it is very difficult to navigate, but go on. So July of 2022. So what happened next? Okay. I did find out that I could file. Mm -hmm. a motion, mm -hmm. you know, another motion to intervene. Mm -hmm. And this hearing was set maybe later in July. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, it's hard for me to keep all the dates straight. Mm -hmm. And the judge, you know, he said that he would speak to my granddaughter mm -hmm. and see if she wanted to see me. Mm -hmm. So he set another hearing date, which would have been August the 9th, maybe of 2022 mm -hmm. and he said you know he had spoken to my granddaughter and she didn't want to see me all right so this is uh this is important now so they cut your visits off in january they don't tell you then some december. right december then some months later they they tell you well the judge decided to cut your visits off and then by august just oh your granddaughter does want to see you and now they want your visits to start up again, and no one's really giving you an explanation for why any of this is happening. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So go ahead. So then you restart visits, right? How many visits did you have? Well, not no. Um, the judge said that he did speak to my granddaughter. She wanted to see me, mm -hmm. and he was going to set up supervised visits. Okay. So he set up. My first visit was September the 17th of 2022, mm -hmm. and they were to be monthly mm -hmm. supervised, like mm -hmm. I was some criminal, you know. And, and at I this had, point, at this point, was there any finding by CPS or the court that you abused your granddaughter? No, nobody Neglected, ever, neglected. Did, did they find you neglected your granddaughter? Absolutely not. Right. Absolutely this this not. all started with your daughter. And so basically through smears, they kept her away for nine months. And now they're saying, yeah, you can see her again, but only supervised, even though there's been no, no finding of anything for any of this. Am I right? Right. Nothing. I've never even been accused of anything. Right. Okay. So yeah, exactly. All right. So go ahead. So what, ha what happens next? Okay, I had one visit September the 17th for mm -hmm. two hours at McDonald's, mm -hmm. and it was wonderful. It was great. Mm -hmm. And on October the 4th, Kristen Antolini called an emergency hearing because my granddaughter called her on the phone. Now, mind you, I just, Kendall was seven, mm -hmm. but she called she called Chris Nanlini on the phone and said, I don't want to see my nanny. Please Anymore. don't make me go. Right. After one visit, after not one seeing visit. after not seeing you for I think eight months. More than that, nine right. months. Okay. And so An Antolini, so, before you go on, it seems like Antolini is driving all of this. She's driving absolutely. you separating you, you from your granddaughter. Even more than CPS. The CPS was helping along as well. All right, so uh, what happens at this hearing? At the hearing, the judge said that he was going to speak to Kendall again. Mm -hmm. And 
I don't think that he set a date up. I don't think. So anyway, on there was supposed to be a hearing on December the 8th. Mm -hmm. And that one was canceled. Mm -hmm. Only I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that it was canceled the day before. And I went in there at the courthouse and sat there in the waiting room waiting for the hearing. Mm -hmm. And a security guard came up to me and he said, are you Miss Layton? I said, yeah. He said, well, they called down and said to tell you that your hearing was canceled. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, they so canceled the hearing. They didn't tell you what happened next. Another hearing was scheduled for January the 11th of 23, mm -hmm. and the judge just completely said that there will be, as long as I continue to post on social media and protest and talk about it, there will never be any contact with the uh, child. All right. So Judge Schaefer is now saying the reason that there won't be any contact is because you were posting things on social media, on Facebook, I think, primarily. So yeah, again, there is no allegation of abuse or neglect. He just didn't like what you were posting on Facebook. And suddenly that's good enough reason to cut you off from any visitation. Am I getting that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All and right. it was brought up, you know, in the hearings the summer before by um, Ann Armstrong, the prosecutor, mm -hmm. by Chris Nanolini numerous times. Uh, you they, they, none of these people like any kind of attention. Uh, and I did reach right. out to Right, I did reach out to Kristen. Right. She didn't respond, and and to yeah. and to social services and to the courts. Uh, and uh, and one thing people should know: the these hearings are closed, and and we're going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, it's very hard to get transcripts to get anything. Now, you had a hearing where where you needed to get the transcripts, and uh, and you had a d very difficult time, and it's because of this rule, but. What what was going on with the hearing? Why did you need to get those transcripts? And what happened there? Okay. After the last hearing in January of 2023, you know, I just, I could not give up. So I'm researching and talking to people and they said, well, you know, try another court, try family court. Mm -hmm. So I did. I filed a petition in family court. Mm -hmm. And sorry, from January till I filed this motion in family court, I asked CPS supervisor, Rick Parks, I said, can you tell me, is this case still open or is it closed? Mm -hmm. He said, no, I believe the case is closed. Mm -hmm. So that gave me the um, direction to go to family court. Mm -hmm. And family court denied me because it was right back to Judge Schaefer because the case was still open. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, I was denied. And um, Judge Schaefer, I never received a copy of the order from January. Nothing. Mm -hmm. So when, when I got the denial from family court, mm -hmm. Judge Schaefer sent me a copy of the order. Mm -hmm. which gave me the time period to file an appeal in the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And so what happened? So I filed that in May, uh, and I needed those transcripts. So I called the um, court reporter. Oh, no, they said you're not allowed to have them over right. and over. Right, because so, you weren't a party to the right. to the case now you were now you were at the hearing so you should have been able to get them but you have right. to be able to prove it and you're having a difficult time proving it and why are you having such a difficult time proving it well um the supreme court because you know these hearings that i had mm -hmm. previous the previous summer you know i I got a notification of a hearing. So I sent those to the Supreme Court and they gave me a court order for mm -hmm. these transcripts. Mm -hmm. And they still won't give so, you the, they still won't give you the transcripts. Well, no, I got the transcripts, mm -hmm. okay. but there was one missing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
And this would have been the transcript where Judge Schaefer tells me about people boo-hooing because they couldn't accept when somebody don't love them anymore in divorce court and this and that. Mm -hmm. and, and so you, you you saw a very arrogant and draconian side of, of Judge Schaefer in this particular court hearing. And if you could get the transcripts, you could show that to the Supreme Court and and possibly get a ruling for bias. Am I getting that right? Right, right. All right. Now, and besides it, besides him, say, say again what he said about people getting divorced. Say say as close to how he said it as possible. Okay, he said. Let me tell you something, Miss Layton. When I was an attorney, do you know how many people come through my office boo hooing because they couldn't accept when somebody doesn't love them anymore? Right. He said that to you, and you weren't getting divorced, am I? Me. Yeah, yeah. You weren't getting divorced, yeah. right? And I told him, I said, with all due respect, this is not divorce court. Mm -hmm. And nobody in this courtroom is going to tell me that my granddaughter doesn't love me anymore. It, is, it, is, it, is it fair to say that, that you, the way you interpreted that is your granddaughter doesn't love you anymore and just get over it? Exactly. exactly. How, how did you feel when he suggested that your granddaughter doesn't love you anymore? You should just get over it. It was crushed and tell the truth and get justice for a child. It's oh, it's just I right. It may, it was maddening. Any anything it's else? It's yeah. just, do you do you remember anything else from that hearing that Judge Schaefer said that's noteworthy? What is it? Excuse me. Did you do you remember anything else that Judge Schaefer said from that hearing that that you're trying to get the transcripts from that's noteworthy? Uh, not not I don't think from that particular hearing. All right, in another hearing, what what else did Judge Schaefer say in other hearings that's noteworthy? Um. Well, you know, like the one in January, you know, where he said, you know, as long as I continue to post and speak out and protest, you know, right. there'll never be any contact with the child. Okay. And anything and that, anything else you want to add about Antolini? Any, anything that she has said that's noteworthy? I'll keep it nice because I'm on right. <laughs> recording. But... Uh, she just, she does not like the publicity. And I, from the very beginning, you know, I've been talking to DHHR in Charleston, you know, client services, representatives, anybody that will listen to me protesting. And, you know, that's the things that she brings up in court. Well, you know, Miss Layton was out there protesting. Right. So she, she, she believes that uh, mentioning that the Judge Schaefer is going to ma make him view you negatively, that you are trying to protest these things. So you, she thinks that you should just quietly accept the way that, that this court has been treating you. Is that fair? Right. Yeah. It All right. Is. So it is. What, where, where is the case now? What happened since, since, since you got it to the Supreme uh, Court? Where is the case now? Well, where it is now, mm -hmm. on... October the 11th was Supreme, the Supreme Court's deadline for CPS, a judge, a prosecutor, Chris Nealy, to respond to my appeal. Mm -hmm. The only person who responded was CPS, and that was through the Attorney, Attorney General's office. Mm -hmm. Chris Nantellini just ignored it. Mm -hmm. So then... After uh, the Supreme Court got a response from CPS, then they directed Kristen Antolini to respond by December the 15th. Mm -hmm. Well, her response was, I need more a time. Two more time. A two 
Am I getting that yeah, right? Exactly. So she she, she was supposed to respond in October. They told her to respond on December 15th. And on December 15th, she asked for two more weeks, which will be at the end of this week. So she still has right. not responded. So I so basically they're stalling uh, these exactly. folks. Uh, and it seems like, and, and you've been doing this all on your own, right? You filed, all on my end. you all filed, on my let, let, let's make sure everyone understands this. You filed all on your own with the, the, the West Virginia Supreme Court to the point that uh, this lawyer, and, and, and Tallini is a lawyer by trade, she's a guardian ad litem in this particular case, CPS and all of these other folks don't know how to respond, so they just keep asking for extensions. And, and in the meantime, you don't see your granddaughter. When uh, For the audience, when again was the last time you saw her? The last time I saw her would have been September the 17th of 2022. Right, and you still haven't stopped fighting, and I'm sure that's, yep. not, I'm sure that's not what they're telling her. Uh, and in Absolutely. the meantime, they've completely severed the relationship between grand, granddaughter and, and, and grandmother. And let, I, a couple more questions. Before all of this got started, what was your relationship like with your granddaughter? How often would you see her? I saw her two or three times a week plus every weekend. Okay. You know, I went to school functions. I was too active in her her medical stuff, her school stuff. And I just I just I just cannot imagine what what she thinks, you know, happened to me. Right. Right. And they're not telling her the truth. Anything else you wanted to add? Anything else that I missed? No, I think that's it. Um, you know, I filed a second complaint on Judge Schaefer, you know, about the January 2023 mm -hmm. hearing about my freedom of speech. And I just got that back last week. I was denied. They think right. that he they did don't, nothing wrong. They don't care. Him, him right. violating your free press. Uh, free speech rights, uh, they don't care. These judicial oversight boards, they're completely feckless in every single state. West Virginia is not any different than any other state. Nancy, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you for everything that you do. I appreciate it. Perseverance.